En we zijn dus nu bij de officiële opening van de Deep Blue Landing Sea te weg naar zee. En vandaag vindt dus de lancering plaats van de glasvezelkabel van Digicel. En uh, Digicel staat ook bekend als een van de grootste telecombedrijven uh, in Suriname. Het doel van vandaag is dat wij de Cable Landing Station officieel in gebruik gaan nemen. Zoals u weet is dat al live gegaan enkele weken geleden. Maar daarover zal de directeur van Digicel, de CEO van Digicel, de heer Deunarain Gopal, u meer vertellen. Dus mag ik dat uitnodigen, meneer Deunarain Gopal, CEO van Digicel Suriname. Well, basically it's a ceremonial opening of our new Deep Blue One project. Deep Blue One is basically a subsea fiber connecting five countries, Trinidad, Tobago, Guyana, Suriname and French Guyana. This is basically to provide data connectivity to the, to the various countries that I just mentioned. We have live traffic on the, um, on the cable. The, the data you're using on your phone is currently coming from this cable with Digicel. So our intention is this is just the first phase. The second phase is to roll out fiber within Suriname to bring high-speed internet to homes and businesses. Well, for Suriname, it's very, very um, um, beneficial. As in, there is only one cable coming into Suriname today. If that cable is to damage, Suriname is basically like a blackout. There is no data coming into Suriname. And because of how critical data connectivity is, you need at least two cables to come into a country, one for redundancy as well. So with this, it strengthens Suriname resiliency for data. If one cable is to have an issue, the other one will always function. So in terms of the oil and gas and the boom that is coming in the future, a lot of the company looking to invest in Suriname will need this resiliency, right? So this is a key factor for investments coming into Suriname. Um, another benefit for Suriname is that the blue one is completely non-Chinese. It's all Alcatel, it's European, and part of a compliance for American company especially, investing in Suriname and these oil company investing in Suriname, they need uh, the need to be on non-Chinese equipment. As you know, there is a global ban by the U.S. on Huawei. This is completely non-Huawei. Uh, so this will help Suriname to attract investors coming in where they need a proper, resilient uh, infrastructure for the capacity. Is there a specific reason why you choose this location? Yes, so that's a good question. So whenever you bring in a cable into a country, you need to bring it in where there are no ships where there are no anchors because these things can be broken with the ship anchors or if there's a lot of commercial activity. So we've consulted with NEMAS and MAS and the environment, uh, environmental, um, the people here. And this location is chosen because we were guaranteed that in the future, there's not gonna be a lot of shipping commercial activity in this area. So it's to protect the cable from uh, breakage. This is the first phase, you just told me. There will be uh, other phases. Um, how long will that take to uh, complete everything, the whole project? Well, so landing the cable was the first phase. Now we're running a fiber from here to Guyana, Georgetown, Guyana, overland. So the cable coming into Suriname from the Atlantic Ocean, if a ship is, or if, if that is to be broken, we can route our traffic overland to Georgetown. And that's creating a, re a redundancy as well. That is, we're hoping to complete that within eight months. It's already all the equipment is in Suriname, it's just to run the fiber there. And then the second part is to roll out fiber to the homes and businesses within Suriname. That as well is going to come once we have our um, transport, we refer to it as a transport or the backbone of the network completed.